Hello. Today we're going to show that there are infinitely many primes of the form 4 to the 4n minus 1. Okay, so let's reformulate this question. We are really want to be looking at the set of all p prime such that p is equivalent to 3 mod 4. Okay, and the reason behind this is that asking if a number is of the form 4 to the n minus 1 is really asking if I divide out 4 enough times, will I end up with negative 1? Okay. And another question is, if I subtract 4 enough times, will I end up with 3? And that's actually an equivalent question because I can either subtract 4 you know, enough times to get me to negative 1, or I could have just subtracted 1 less time and I would be at 3. Okay. So basically what I'm saying is that um, 4 to the n minus 1 is um, just equivalent to negative is equivalent to 3 mod 4 okay where mod 4 remember that mod 4 is basically saying if I divide out 4 if I subtract 4 enough times what remainder am I left with okay and so in this case that's 3 and if I subtract if I subtract 4 another time I'll be left with negative 1 that's why this is equivalent to 3 mod 4 all right so now that we have that out of our belt, let's look, let's look at this set of all prime numbers that are equivalent to 3 mod 4, and we want to show that this set is infinite. Okay, so how do we show it's infinite? Well, let's suppose that it's finite, okay? That S is finite. And now, um, we know that since it's finite, it will have a maximal element. So let p star be equal to the maximum of s, okay? And now I'm going to take the product. So similar to how um, Euclid, or I forget who proved it, but somebody way long, thousands of years ago, proved that there were infinitely many, many primes by saying, well, if there's finitely many, then let's just multiply them all together and add one. And that number has to have at least a prime factor that isn't in on our list, okay? And so by that argument, you can prove that there are infinitely many primes, and we're gonna apply a similar argument here, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take the product of all p prime, all p i less than or equal to p star, um, where this is just um, prime, no, any prime number, doesn't have to be, you know, mod three mod s, or three, <laughs> three mod four, okay? So I'm going to take the product of all primes less than or equal to p star, and I'm going to add 1, okay? Now notice that, you know, any prime that isn't 2, okay? So a little side note here. Okay, so if, if p um, prime is not 2, then p is, equ is equivalent to 1 or 3 mod 4, okay? And that's just because it, um, it can't be even like any other if it's if it's equivalent to zero or two mod four it's an even number um which is all primes besides two are odd okay they don't have two as a factor so notice that um if if a number um is three mod four okay it must have a prime factor that is th also three mod four. And that's simply because if I have a number that's one mod four and I multiply it by one um, mod four. So if I take two numbers that are one mod four and I multiply them together, I'm gonna get a number that's also one mod four. Okay, and you can check that on your own. But basically the rules of modular um, uh, multiplication is you just multiply as you normally would and then you reduce it modulo um, whatever the number is. So in this case, I multiply one by one, I get one and I that's already one mod four, okay? So, um, and then if I look at one times three mod four, this is equal to three mod four. And then if I look at three times three mod four, well, three times three is nine and I'm gonna reduce that modulo four, so subtract eight and I get three times three mod four is equal equivalent to one mod four. Okay, so 
an interesting observation. And it, in particular, it tells us that we can't just have a bunch of prime numbers that are one mod four multiplying to give us a prime that's three mod four. If we get something that's three mod four, we it ha we have to have started with a number that is that with a prime number that was three mod four. Okay. All right. So how does that apply here? Well, this product of all primes less than or equal to p star, what is this mod 4? Well, how many factors of 2 does it have? It has exactly one factor of 2 corresponding to the single prime that is 2. Okay, So if something only has one factor of 2, it can't be divisible by 4, and therefore this thing has to be equivalent to 2 mod 4. And so when I add 1 to it, it just becomes equivalent to 3 mod 4. And this is a crucial observation. So now that we've constructed a number that's equivalent to three mod four, and in addition, similar to how the um, similar to the famous proof of of how pro the number of primes is infinite, if I look at the product of pi, where um, pi is less than or equal to p star, and I add one, okay. If I look at its prime factorization, which we know is unique and exists, okay. Um, none of these prime factors can belong to pi. So no, no qi is equal to pj for all i and j. Okay, so so this this product shares no common factors with with um with the prime factorization of everything in parentheses here. Okay. And that's because suppose that q sub i were in here. So suppose suppose that like q sub three or whatever was inside this product then it would divide this, this term and it would also divide the term on the right and therefore it would have to divide this one here, which is obviously impossible. Okay, so that's the reason why these, these prime factors are distinct from everything in the product. So since all the q sub i's are distinct from, from all the p sub i's, we know that um, one of these q sub i's is equivalent to 3 mod 4. Okay, so we have that... Um, q sub i is equivalent to 3 mod 4 for some i. And that's just based on the previous kind of analysis that I did with uh, modular multiplication. Okay, um, Is we have to have a prime factor that's equivalent to 3 mod 4. And that prime factor can't be equal. q i cannot be within s, right? Because it's not in, because p star is the maximum element. And we've, we've included everything in s in this product. So we've now found a number, we found a prime number that is equivalent to 3 mod 4 and it doesn't belong to S. And that's a contradiction, okay? Diction, thus, um, the cardinality of S cannot be finite. And that's it, we're done. This is almost mimicking um, ideas behind the proof of infinite number of primes. It's a little bit more nuanced, but the basic trick is the same. All right, any questions, please leave them in the comments.